Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the three conversions of three different printers that I did. Um, they are the XP1500, the Epson Artisian 1430, and the Stylus Pro 4900. Uh, first things first, the most cheapest one to convert without the headaches would be the Artisian. However, the Artisian is the most slowest of the two, but, or of the three, but is the most consistent. So the only real problem you have with the Artisian is that you have to fill the cartridges and it stops and you fill them and then it continues without a glitch in your uh, image um so really just the cartridges and that's pretty much it i'm thinking you possibly can run a continuous ink system to that because the cartridges are more flowy we'll see um, the second one to convert, uh, easiest to convert, I would say, is the Stylus Pro 4900 and the best option to do so. It's a little more expensive. The carts run from $150 to $200. You'll require um, three bottles of white ink, um, a set of color inks depending on how many channels you want to do um the conversion process consists of just inputting the refillable cartridges and doing print head cleans until you push out the old ink from the very long lines it takes a long time to push out the old ink and actually get your new ink to push in the channels you're using um lastly would be the XP 15,000 one moment lastly would be the XP 15,000 though it's more easy to find um, at an economical rate there's a little bit more of a troubleshoot that goes on with some of the printers. Like I said, I was lucky enough to find two printers that do not give any kind of headaches um, like I'm hearing with some people. Um, however, I do believe it's touchy to the inks. It's touchy to the films that you're using. Um, so be very careful when you are converting don't get me wrong if you are tedious with your process you'll go without a hitch um certain papers do not or certain films do not work from what i've seen on the xp from the three that i've tested um my inks have worked well I did try a continuous ink system, so I can't knock the second set of inks I tried until I try them on regular cartridges, and I can't knock the continuous ink system until I try it with the new inks. So I'm still trial and erroring. However, this blew up quicker than I expected, so I needed to... Um, be able to produce at a faster rate so all in all the best bet would be if you could find a 4900 it 17 inch prints it prints from rolls it has self cleaning it has single channel cleaning um, and you can pretty much convert it to UV printing, DTG, or DTF. I think DTF is more important at the moment. So that's what I went with. Um, again, the Artisan is great if you have one on hand and or you can find one for, you know, for pennies. The print time on the Artisan is about 15 minutes for an A3 sheet. 
on the XP 15,000. It's about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 or 10 to 11 minutes on the XP 15,000. I want to say a little sooner, but I'm, I'll recalculate that. And then the um, Stylus Pro 4900 A3 in about five and a half minutes. Outstanding, outstanding. Um, out of all three of them, the most consistent with papers has, or with films, has been the Artisian 1430. Um, so again there are some left and right good and bad to each one of them you just have to really pick your poison i strongly believe out of all of them the artisan requires the least of the maintenance i literally do two nozzle ch nozzle cleans a day and that's it i'm running it all day 14 to 15 hours the tank has yet to fill on me um it's about 60% now, but there is online resetting. So in the event that uh, I'll probably end up getting a chip resetter, but also online for eight bucks, can't go wrong. It takes a long time to to um, to fill anyway. So eight bucks is all right to have to keep track of something, I guess. But anyway, so... Um, Oh yeah, so with the Artisan, you have to print 100% on both color ink and white to achieve exact color. Otherwise, black becomes gray um, and all the colors look kind of dull. With the XP 15,000, for some reason when I max the inks past 35%, I don't see a color loss, but I can't raise it past that. Um, and I don't, it doesn't waste any less ink than the Artisan at 100%. Um, with the 4900, Stylus Pro 4900, I did lower the inks to 35%, and the grays became, uh, the blacks became grays, and the color was a little dull. When I raised them to both 100, um, towards the bottom of the paper, there was like a little bit too much ink saturation. So I'm still playing with that. Um, the colors were outstanding though at 100%. So there's gonna be more videos of me actually playing around with the colors. For those of you who wanna know how I keep the color um, schemes the same, uh, so if I had image A, 50 of them, image B, 20 of them, image C, 100 of them, I'll put image C all to print on one printer, which would be the fastest because there's the most, and then B on another printer, A on another, but I keep the same image printing on the same printer, so I don't take A of 50 and put 10, 10, 10, no, I just, um, for right now, because I haven't ran into, I didn't think about splitting them up because I have multiple orders at once. So I'm knocking out multiple orders on uh, from each printer. So um, a couple things I'd like to talk about when you're factoring in um, converting a printer you want to make sure, now I said this on another video, but you want to make sure that you have a chip resetter for your ink cartridges or that your printer model is compatible with a chipless solution. And you would go online to check chipless solutions and they'll give you a list of printer models that can be done. In the event that there isn't a chipless solution, you will need either refillable cartridges that refill automatically, or that auto reset, not one-time use chips. Okay, so you're gonna need one of the three, one way or another. 
you're going to need a chip resetter for your maintenance tank. That is no option. Um, you do require maintenancing on the print head cleans on the printers. There's also another way that I'm, excuse me, that I'm looking into. I'm not sure if it's fully effective, but it worked for me this morning, but I will touch base on that a little more. So you wanna make sure you have a maintenance tank resetter because you're going to need that. And or if they don't have a resetter that you can do it online. Some models are, you're able to do it through a, a WIC program. So um, you also want to make sure that you have enough inks to fill the bigger cartridges on the bigger format printers. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a really good heating element to evenly cure your DTF. Um, one of these hobby small little, um, I got these small one. Uh, heat gun is not going to work. You're going to need more of a, a, a bigger scale one. Not huge, but I mean more than than the one you've seen me use in the videos. Um, you're also going to need some cleaning solution, some patience, and I just wanna make sure that I touch base on everything that I ran into with each one of these printers. Um, I think that's it so all in all they all run great for what they do for their price um obviously you don't have you're not gonna have the same setup as me but maybe one of the three printers or i can help you narrow down from any of the three printers i can only speak from experience guys so i won't talk about he say she say unless i've tested it myself um, I am converting a 4,000 next week, but when I purchased this one, um, it, I was told that um, nothing was coming out of the magenta, and they just didn't have time to deal with it, so I'm not sure if I'll get it up and running or what, but we'll see. Um, you'll also want to run an external tank on your printers. Um, it is pretty tedious to reset and take out the insides and clean them. If you do not, you're going to have overspill. Um, so you're going to want to run it a line out. And no matter what, if you have that line running out, you're still going to need to reset the chip. There is a counter on the memory, not based on how much ink gets poured in. Um, I... I've tested um, so far everything you see me running as of right now is DTF Superstore inks. I am also trying Kingdom DTF inks on one printer. And then um, I'm also trying another company as well. And again, I'm not, there's no reason why I am. I'm doing it only to just give people options. Some stores are sold out. Um, some stores ship faster than others. So guys, I, I like to test and have backup plans for in the event that something doesn't go as planned because you know, that always happens. So anyway, uh, I'm down to one sublimation printer and after one of my main customers uh, finishes his bulk order on t-shirts because I am saying goodbye to vinyl and the only thing I cannot achieve is reflective on um, direct to film and that's okay I am not dealing with weeding and cutting anything so that will go as well as the vinyls but I'm staying with sublimation and DTF because at the end of the day memorials and white t-shirts I still like to do on polyester unless the customer requests cotton so um guys oh uh, all these printers will require a rip software to print 
it is the only way you can tell it um, where to lay the white, how much white. Um, I'm currently using AcroRip for AcroRip 10.2 for all of the printers, um, only because they're all compatible so far, and it's the one I had, and it worked. So I went on a hunt for a printer for printers that pretty much were compatible with the program I already had, because it's a, that's the biggest price tag of the whole conversion. But once you do, remember you have to commit to the maintenance. There is maintenance on all of the printers no matter what, and you have to commit to it. Um, otherwise, the long route to getting it back and running will be obviously a little frustrating, not impossible, but frustrating to do. So um, pick and choose your poisons and how, how you want to. Um, same with sublimation. So what I do is I just come in and I'll print one thing from each one of the printers and call it a day. Um, I'm cycling the ink and then right before bed I'll do something small too just to kind of keep the inks going. Small little sheet of paper, regular printer paper, and that's okay. Um, I do want to advise also uh things i missed on the artisan the only modification you really have to do is plucking out the rollers on the exit there's about two rolls and you literally just get something like a needle type thing and pluck them out they are springs that hold it together and they just come right off um, with the XP 15,000, you have to take out the whole brace that houses the rollers on the exit. Um, otherwise, it'll still scrape regardless of prying. And with the 4,900, you don't have to do anything. I mean, the thing is so smart. It lifts its rollers. It's crazy. Um, so far, I have not had to do any kind of modifications to it whatsoever um so guys once again i chose acro rip because it allows um channel manipulation if there's another program that you use that allows channel manipulation as well drop them down below um let me know what printers you guys are using and Again, all my printers were purchased used and I converted them. There is no need to have them new unless you want to have the peace of mind. But a lot of these are, a lot of the printers that you're able to convert are really um, discontinued models from Epson or really or older models from Epson that you really can't find or rarely find in stores. So you'll have to purchase used anyway. And I'm all for that. Um, so if you have any questions, like, follow, comment, subscribe. Drop your questions down below. I have a group. Don't forget to join. It's easier to go back and forth there as well as answer questions that may help someone else in your scenario as well. Um, you'll see me soon when I convert this guy next week. <laughs>